I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about understanding your partner's world. So, so, this is very important because you really need to understand your partner and what's going on with them if you're going to maintain a connection with them. Right. And oftentimes we get caught up in life, we get caught up in our own issues or whatever it is that we're dealing with and we start to ignore our partners. Right. When we get disconnected from them and we don't really understand them anymore, it often leads to a shocking breakup. Yes, it does. It looks like it came out of nowhere. So Margaret's got some great research on this today. What are we going to be talking about? Well, we're still, we had just started to talk about John Gottman, who is one of the celebrity um, attachment and, and couples therapists in the country. Sure. He's done a great deal of research. Mm -hmm. And I had started to present to you from one of his books called The Seven Principles of a Happy Marriage. Yep. And I had done an introduction and we had talked about one of his most famous concepts which he calls the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Yep. And there's a good video on it that we did so yep. go back and review that one. Yeah, you can review that one. Um, so we're going to move on today to talk about love maps. Ooh. Okay. And we're into a part of Gottman's work where he has many, many um, questions and answers that couples can do alone, together with their therapist. There are all kinds of different ways that you can do it. Okay. But what uh, love maps really means knowing your partner's world. And you can't assume it's the same as yours. Oh no, okay. it rarely is. Right, because partners may have different jobs, one may stay home, um, you may be in to totally two different, totally different careers. And how they see the world. And how they see the world. Because of attachment yeah. styles. Right. Yes, and you can definitely have two different attachment styles. And <laughs> see the you world. probably do. Differently, probably you do. <laughs> it's probably anxious avoidant, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so there are all sorts of things to talk about. And I continue to be struck sometimes by how well some people know each other and by how little other people know each other. And I would say, well, have you ever asked your partner this or that? No, well, why not? Well, I didn't want to be nosy. If you're thinking about a commitment to this person, be nosy. Mm -hmm. Get to know them as well as you possibly can. Yeah. Okay, but people don't mean to not do something. They mean to, you know, respect their partner's privacy. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move on to love maps. And to start, I'm going to read you a story that Dr. Gottman quotes, and it's an interesting story. Okay. Rory was a pediatrician with an in, in an intensive care unit for babies. Okay. He was beloved at the hospital where everyone called him Dr. Rory. Okay. He was a reserved man, but capable of great warmth, humor, and charm. He was also a workaholic who slept in the hospital an average of 20 nights per month. Since there are only 30 nights per month, that was quite a bit, yeah. right? Yeah, this guy's going to work himself to death. He didn't know the names of his children's friends or even the name of the family dog. Wow. When what? He, How did he not know the name of the family dog? When he was asked which room led to the house's back door, he turned to ask his wife, Lisa. Wow. So okay. this guy's completely disconnected from completely his own family. Completely disconnected. How do you not know the name of your dog? I would, well, <laughs> here it is. Wow. His wife was... I don't know why she left me. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's about it. His wife was upset over how little she saw of Rory yep. and how emotionally disconnected he seemed to be. She frequently tried to make little gestures to show him she cared, but her attempts just annoyed him. 
Hmm. She was left with the sense that he simply didn't value her or their marriage. To this day, says Dr. Gottman, I am struck by the story of this couple. He was an intellectually gifted man who didn't even know the name of the family dog or how to find the back door. Of the many problems their relationship faced, perhaps the most fundamental was a shocking lack of knowledge about his own life. Yeah, ridiculous. He had become so caught up with his work that there was little space left over in his brain for the basics, even the basics, of his wife's world. Wow. Okay? Well, I would say he's definitely got an avoidant attachment style, right? I would think so, too. In contrast, emotionally intelligent couples are intimately familiar with each other's world. Mm -hmm. I call this having a richly detailed love map. The part of your brain where you store all the relevant information about your partner. Another way of saying that is that these couples have made plenty of cognitive room for their marriage. Mm -hmm. They remember the major events in each other's history and they keep updating their information as the facts and feelings of their spouse's world change. Okay? So it's not a one-time thing. Gottman, yeah, sure. Right. Gottman also offers a huge list of questions for, to help people think about what they need to know about okay. each other. And I can only give you a sample. Most of his lists are 20 questions, but I picked out five I liked. All right. Um, from two of the, the big categories. So this would be a good thing to maybe assess just generally how well you knew your partner. Exactly. Um, and or you could, their world. Or yeah. their world, yeah. exactly. Um, without such a love map, you can't really know your spouse. And if you don't really know someone, how do you truly love them? Okay? Mm -hmm. So here are love, love map questionnaires. Um, true or false? I can name my partner's best friends. Mm -hmm. Think about it for a second. Okay. Okay? I can list my partner's relatives that she likes the least. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, you probably had Thanksgiving dinner yeah. with them. Yeah. That should be an easy one. Yeah. You'd have to be pretty disconnected if you right. can't be like, oh, it's Uncle Larry. Yeah. <laughs> I know my partner's favorite music. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can tell you the most stressful thing that happened to my partner as a child. Mm -hmm. I know my partner's major current worries. And believe it or not, I think that would be the one that most people wouldn't know. And that's a big one. And that's huge. Right? Because that's current. That's current. That's what's going on with that's them at this moment. what's going on with them at this moment. So maybe look back and think about your last relationship. Did you know right. what was going on with their worries? What were with their the, current With their worries? world, yeah. yeah. And, you know, people have jobs and relationships and all kinds of things that they need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and here are some other questions. And this is another 20 questions deal. Um, that you can ask yourself or your partner. Okay. Describe in detail what I did today or yesterday. Okay? Okay. That's not as easy as it sounds. I tried to think of what my partner did yesterday, and it took me a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. All right? What do I most like to do with my time off? What do they most like to do with their time off? Yeah. Okay. What was my worst childhood experience? I think most... Is, would that be like your, your partner is asking you that question? They're saying to you, what was my worst childhood experience? Yeah, do and you then, know? Do you know? Yeah, and then you, you're saying, okay. Right, or you can just sit and ask them, Craig, do you know what I did yesterday or today? <laughs> okay, or you can do it with the therapist, you can do it with friends, you can do it with anybody you like. Um, yeah, what was my worst childhood experience? Mm -hmm. Name the two people I most admire. Mm -hmm. For me, it would be Freud mm -hmm. and who else? Probably me. Probably you, right. <laughs> okay. Name, what is my favorite song? What is my partner's favorite song? 
Okay. Okay. Um, knowing your partner and updating your knowledge constantly is a lifelong process. Yep. And sometimes when I stop to think about it, when my partner gets anxious, sometimes I might not have noticed what it is they're worried about. Yep. Okay. So if you're interested in looking at the whole list, you can buy the book. It's not expensive. It comes in paperback and it's John Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think, Craig? I think it's good. Um, I think the questions give you a little bit of insight into how well you may have known your partner or how much you may have been disconnected. Obviously, it was only a few questions. Right. But if you sat there and thought, wow, I didn't know any of these. Right. It may give you some hints as to why the relationship didn't last. You always have to stay attuned to your partner. And it's not easy to do it when you have your own worries and needs and, and fears and struggles and all those things. But you have to know your partner. You yes, have to you be do. curious about your right. partner. Always curious. And mm -hmm. there's another famous psychologist out there who says that too. That's Harville Hendricks. That's right. That he says you need to be curious always. No matter how long you've been together, there are still things you can learn. Yep. And, and remember, I've talked about that in numerous videos. Yes. And um, I can think of someone I talked with fairly recently and I was asking her basically how well did they know each other. And she said, well, I wouldn't want to ask him some of these questions. I said, do you have a commitment to him? Are you planning to marry him? Well, yes. Nothing is off limits if you're going to make a commitment to someone. Yep. You can ask it nicely, you can ask it sensitively, but if you're going to marry this person, you really need to know everything there is to know. Yeah, I've heard okay. some very interesting things during breakups from people yeah. where they wouldn't answer questions that would be fairly reasonable to answer or that their partner wouldn't answer it. And I'm like, this is just odd. Yeah. Like, if they're not going to tell you that, how are you supposed to be in a relationship with them if they're not going to tell you this? Would you buy a car without a test drive? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You might have to with coronavirus. Yes, you might have. <laughs> yes, that's well, they'll bring it to your house. Exactly. They so, they so want to do some business. Yeah. Um, I've noticed some car dealerships emailing me, emailing me to do that. <laughs> I'm, I don't think so. First they offered to pay the first month. Now it's up to three. Yeah. I wish I, I needed a new car. Yeah, I think I'll wait yeah. until I can test drive it myself. <laughs> okay. You Good get research. The, you get the idea. Give Margaret a thumbs up for her research on this one. Of course, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret, of course, is available for Skype coaching. If you think I can be helpful to you, please contact me. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.